it's uh, I have a newspaper from July 25th, 2012. It's actually August 8th, and I'm with reporters from British Columbia. This is the Enbridge area, and we have a worker here that um, is telling us that this is still full of oil, that every day Enbridge comes and bags this up. Well, why would they come bag this up if it's not oil? If it's just peat moss, why would they even waste their time doing it? This is all oil that collects through here. Remember, this is 2012, after they said that it's already done and clean. This is what collects every single day. You think this is oil here? Yes, very much so. And why do you think that? Oh, it smells like oil. You can see oil floating all over the top of the water. Uh, workers come and clean it up and dispose of it at a, a certain disposal site because it has oil in it. Yep. So, and the river's open right now, right? Yes. Doesn't make sense to you, does it? No, it don't. Now, you say you swim in here sometimes? Yes, about every day. Why? Uh, I used to swim in here since I was born when I was a kid, and then as they opened it up, they said it was clean. And, but evidently it's not. You can still see oil. Right. Um, well, I'm going to go right over here, um, right over in this. See, this looks really nice through here, but I'm going to go right over here, and I'm going to show these guys where I can fill my glove up with oil. Uh, where there's no current it's a lot easier where there's the current's um, not catching it well we don't want to get you fired right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get out of here in a minute yeah, it's nasty they, they're here every morning every morning cleaning this stuff up it's... so did this morning did they already collect some of that yeah yes they did so this was already empty this morning no it wasn't totally empty it was uh, uh about where it's at now it was out farther yeah. and they've been bagging it up since then so now it's where it's at because they've already taken 50 60 bags or whatever the one side boat this, this two years I mean, later obviously after the spill i mean what goes through your mind when you when oh it's you nasty this? i i grew up on this river i swam in this river since i was three years old and to see this come and then they open it back up and it's still dirty it's it's nasty it's not not a good sight it's, it's, it's an eyesore you, you don't want to see nothing like this that you live here all your life Uh, what's your name, please? Scott Roberts. And Scott, where are you from? Uh, CTV News in Vancouver. Um, what are you here for? Uh, we're just here doing a story about the um, Enbridge spill here in the uh, in the Battle Creek Marshall area from two years ago, and um, how it may impact decisions made uh, north of the border in Canada as far as uh, Enbridge's proposal for the Northern Gateway pipeline that's going to run from uh, just north of Edmonton. Uh, to the coast of northern BC. So we're just uh, following what happened here two years ago, seeing how uh, the situation impacted residents, seeing how Enbridge has, uh, has done as far as the cleanup, how EPA has done as far as the cleanup, and uh, any lessons that can be learned for, for uh, residents in Canada. We uh, just trying to get the story out of them. It's just all starting to pop up. Takes a minute or two. What's it smell like? It's, I mean, it's oil. I've smelled oil before. That's oil. Think of how bad it was when you had a million gallons in here. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> oh, it's incredible seeing it for yourself. Hard to believe, isn't it, when they say We're it's on clean? on the Kalamazoo River now, and this is, again, two years after the spill took place. We just dug up some of the riverbed, and this is what pops to the surface. You can see these little droplets of oil right across the river, and you can even see clumps of dirt like that. You smell that? That's oil. Uh, 
Now we're standing in the Kalamazoo River. We just spent about 10 minutes digging up the riverbed and this is what we're finding floating to the surface among this sort of blue sheen is also a dirt tar-like substance and I can tell you it smells just like oil. Nice, very nice. So John, let's start from the beginning with you. I mean, you worked for um, SCT when, when the cleanup happened. You were sort of a contract worker, I take it. Walk me through your initial um, contact with, with the spill and, and what your role was. Um, I'm in the union, I'm a pipe fitter, and when the oil spill happened, it was in my backyard. I was called to work, and I was working in a yard that Enbridge had, and Enbridge actually appointed me to be the yard boss. So I was the yard boss for the biggest yard for the biggest oil spill in the United States history. And um, then I switched over to cleanup, and they started, they wanted to make sure that they were um, able to turn that pipe back on so that way they can make their eight nine million dollars a day and they were telling us to start putting rocks over it and dirt over it and grass over it and I was watching this at different areas and I just couldn't I mean I live here my ancestors the first mayor of this town I'm a Navy veteran I have a bronze star for saving a man's life and I'm trying to save people's lives now from Enbridge because in my opinion their oil spills from this diluted bitumen kills people and I mean, we've had a lot of people die here and had seizures and miscarriages and babies born deformed. And they're saying this is clean, that people can swim in here. I am petrified to have kids in here swallowing this sheen, oil chunks. I mean, you just pulled a chunk the size of your hand almost out of here, full of, I mean, what if a kid swallows drops of that? And the documents from Enbridge say that this type of oil causes permanent lifelong damage if you swallow some of it. And then when there is a spill, the chemicals are so intense and so toxic that it can cause permanent damage. It just takes years for people to see the effects. So Enbridge right now says everything's fine, but it's not. Tell me when when you worked for the company, um, you know, you, you said they were sort of laying some coconut matting or whatever over, and this was near here, my understanding is, or was this over in Talmadge? This was in Talmadge Creek and, I mean, all along the river. I worked in probably 10 different spots along the 40 mile stretch of river. So I got to see a lot of different areas and a lot of different parts of the cover-up. Over here, when we were just walking in, you said this was part of the, the reason you, uh, you were terminated. You said that's where you first came forward and said, I'm not sure we're doing things right here. Tell me that story and sort of referencing where we are now. Well, about 15 feet away, I worked here and I worked about 15 feet away on the other side of this little clump of grass here. Well, what happened was, Enbridge told us to change the boom. They put out this white boom. It was full of oil. And they said, put out nice white boom. So we put it out, guess what? The EPA came right after that and said it was clean and clear. I said, it's not. I went to Enbridge and I made a complaint and Enbridge told my company, SCT Environmental, to fire me the next day because I reported an oil cover up to the media and it made their reputation look bad. What did SCT tell you? About SCT you told me that you're not allowed to videotape any of the area, you're not allowed to go to the news and report cover-ups, and because you did that, you violated a law um, or their, their policy. Well, it was not in their policy that you can't videotape, it's not in their policy you can't go to the media, and guess what, I have phone records that I went to the EPA and made official complaints to the government, which they deny, but I have proven in court because I have the phone records. What? Um why did you come forward to, you came forward to some local news stations, I mean, why did you make an issue of it? I couldn't sleep at night. It really bothered me. I saw a truckload of dead animals once, and we were talking about like 500 dead animals. Every single fish in the river for 40 miles was dead. And that's going to happen in Canada. All these fishermen, salmon fishermen, hunters, you're not going to have that. It's, they're going to be gone. And there goes your livelihood. I mean, this is very serious. We're not talking about, we're talking about profits for a company to put a pipeline through. And it's not going to help the local residents. It's not going to help the landowners. And it's not going to help you feed your family. It's going to hurt you when there is a spill. And Enbridge has had over 800 spills in the last 10 years. And they have proven that they don't have a good track record. And they should not be allowed to put in these pipes. I, it disgusts me what they're getting away with. Just because of money. Because they got power. And you, so you sued SCT and you got, um, you did get a settlement. Yes, I did. And what was, what was the reason for, what was the reasoning for settling? Um, the reason that I settled is because I'm going after Enbridge. Enbridge is the one that did this. They knew the pipe was bad for five years. 
when there was when there was a spill and alarms are going off they didn't even care they just kept pushing it through and that oil reached my mother is sick from this and my family is, is sick from this and my friends and my community and I'm not gonna sit by and let them do this I lost a twenty three hundred dollar a week job because of this and it was it was hard to give up that kind of money when you're you know in, in the United States right now unemployment's so high but I couldn't sit by and let them get away with this so I complained I knew I was gonna lose my job and I lost it and I, I, I know for a fact I'm doing the right thing and I don't care what anybody says uh, Enbridge will say that I'm no part of this cleanup I got the documents to prove that Enbridge signed off on all these areas, every single area, before the EPA came to look at it. And what did SET say when they were in court about why they settled with you? They as said opposed that, to just... They fighting. said they settled with me because it would be financially better for them to not keep going through with the trial. They were already done with their part of the trial. They weren't going to have any more workers come and we had one or two days left. They might have spent ten thousand dollars, but if I lose trial, I got to give them seventy-five thousand dollars at least for their attorney fees. So, they when they say that they settled for financial reasons to save them money, that's a hundred percent lie. SCT Environmental is lying to everybody, and they gave me a very very large settlement to shut me up. Well, it didn't shut me up; it gave me money to pursue Embridge, and that's what I'm doing. I'm making T-shirts. I just spent ten thousand dollars on T-shirts to give away for free. I, I want the community and the world to know what these companies are doing because they've killed people in my community. I mean, you're obviously, you know, you're sort of a one-man crusader here against this company. I am. Um, I, and, and I don't know why. Why can't it be a hundred-man crusade? And, and, you know, why can't this be a group of people, women and, women and children and men come together, you know? One man, I believe, one man can make a difference because I've proven it to myself and to other people. But a group of men and women together can can change that pipeline that shouldn't go through. What's your message to British Columbians who will be watching this story and trying to make their minds up about whether this is a good project for their community? Um, Enbridge's uh, proposed Northern Gateway. What do you want them to know? What's your sort of message if you could speak directly to British Columbians? I just want you guys to know. Just speak through me, but okay. yeah, through through me to them, yeah. Alright. Um, I just want everybody in Canada to know, in British Columbia, that my entire family works for a pipeline company. They put in the pipe. This is our livelihood. This is what I do for a living. And I'm willing to give up everybody in my family's future income and my future income to do the right thing and tell everybody what these oil spills do to the communities and to the businesses, and to the landowners, and to your health. And I am going to do something about it, and I'm not going away until I've already had four death threats, I've had slashed tires, my brakes have been messed with, and I'm, just, I'm not going away. I don't care, they can scare me, they can kill me, but this story will go on. What should people in, in Canada do to, to combat this proposal? I mean, there's a lot of political pressure to put this in. What can people, what can the average person do? You have to have town meetings. You have to come together and you actually have to vote against it. Um, you have to have a voice. I am one man with a voice, but my voice is loud because I make it loud. You have to go to these meetings and you have to stand up and you have to ask those hard questions. And then you have to watch the videos that I have produced that actually show the truth about what Enbridge did during this cleanup. Th these aren't my words. These are the words of the community. And these are the documents uh, that, that EPA and Enbridge has given me through Freedom of Information that I have now am trying to spread out to the world. You need to watch these videos and you need to tell everybody about it because when you see it, you know what's really going on. You know, we just did this simple exercise here today, um, sort of showing what's still in this river. Why? Do you feel like people here don't either know that or aren't willing to listen? I mean, why isn't there more of a concerted effort to get that message out there, I'm wondering? Well, if you go in town and you just go to random people, they're going to probably tell you that it was horrible what happened, but the news reports and the health department says that everything's fine and it's clean. Well, I'm living proof by bringing you out here and showing you that if you put your rake in the river, in the mud, that the oil is a foot, two foot down. It's at the bottom of this river and it's not going away. It's got to be cleaned up. It's got to be dug out. 
And for them to sit there and say that it's going to hurt the environment more, that's a lie. As I said, my family works for oil companies. My one brother's an environmental coordinator. My one brother's an environmental inspector. And they have told me that by leaving this, you are polluting your wells and the river for generations. By digging it out, you are protecting everybody. But it's money. And, and Enbridge buys property. Enbridge bought all this property. They don't want us on these edges to do this. They want to say we're trespassing. And they own they own this over here, this side? or where They, they bought up a lot, I know. But. They did. They bought all these houses up here on the other side of this. Um, but right here, this, this land and the land over there, they have leased um, for the cleanup. But they didn't actually purchase it. But there's a lot of areas they've tried to kick me out just for videotaping. Why? When I'm showing oil that you have left behind, that Enbridge has not cleaned up, why would you follow me, harass me, try to arrest me, and call me a liar when I got the video proof that in that area that you say it's mud, guess what? It was really oil because you dug it all back up. You had security guards circling you. I walked right through and videotaped you digging the whole area back up that you said it was mud. And again, a warning to Canadians about your situation, what you guys have been through here. Any more to say to them? Yeah, if they put this pipeline through up there, you're going to have, I mean, the Trans-Canada pipeline that they just put in with all the top-notch pipeline materials, the um, all the top-of-the-line pump stations and detection systems, guess what? There was still 12 leaks in the first year with the best of the best. So how can Enbridge put this through mountains and rivers and lakes and act like it's not going to happen to them? When we know from their track record, 800 spills in over 10 years, I mean, wow. That, that's enough right there just to say, I, I don't trust them. Nobody should trust them. They, For one, you guys need impact statements to find out what this tar sand oil actually does to, to your health. And this is the largest spill in the United States history. And guess what? Because these oil companies have so much power, there is no health study for this. How can you not have a health study for the biggest toxic spill in the United States history? And it's because of money. They, they control our government. Well, I'm proud of what he did. Well, you know, telling them about those, Bill, I'm proud of it. It's always the family ain't real proud because that's what they all do for a living. Mm -hmm. My son-in-law, my grandsons, my other son and all of them. But Johnny just did what he thought was best. Mm -hmm. And then come and tell him he got hit by some guy sneaking up behind him, hitting him in the head. And I told him if he ever goes out there again by himself, you know, you don't go out there by yourself. There's people assaulting you in that. Mm -hmm. So it scared me, he told me he wasn't allowed to go by himself to take somebody with him, I don't care who it was, at least if somebody's with you, they're not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And then when he called me, he told me about cutting the brakes and <clears throat> stuff like that, and then getting attacked at the casino and, you know, getting hit at the casino that one time, and then he went in, and I sent him on his birthday. It was his birthday and I gave him 20 bucks. He was broke. Let's go out with your friends for your birthday. He walked in there. He don't hardly ever drink. Walked in there, hadn't even drank, hadn't even talked to nobody, and the security guards attack him and stuff and beat on him. Get him arrested. And he's been through too much. So yeah, it worries me all the time what they might do to him. I mean, they could just walk up. Somebody just shoot him any time. You know, when he went to Washington, just lately I'm thinking to myself, somebody in the crowd just blowing him away. You know, just some stupid, somebody that was against this, you know, and him up there speaking and that. I think, man, somebody could have just shot him just up there speaking. So every time then he goes different places to speech, it worries me all the time that some stupid, crazy person might do something to him. Enbridge people is what I'm thinking. And just to shut him up because Enbridge is the only one that you want to hurt him. Because they don't they want him talking. They don't want him doing something with this stuff. And so I'm always afraid they're going to hurt him. 
So, it just worries me him doing stuff and when he leaves and stuff, but I worry about him all the time anyway. He's my oldest, my baby. Oh, she really got mad and she called and she says you're not her, her, not her brother no more because they're in Texas doing the oil and they went up there to do it and this girl had herself chained to something and she had Johnny's sweatshirt on. <laughs> and she, oh, she was so mad when it was on Facebook and all that. She's, that's not my brother no more. He makes me so mad. He's rude in my family. <laughs> but then Christmas coming. Guess what? Johnny, you coming to Christmas or not? <laughs> You know, here's your presents. <laughs> you know, so they all love, love him, but, you know, they got to keep their own side, too, because that's what they do for a living. And that's what he did for a living until he spoke up. Now, none of them had guts enough to speak up, but he did. Um, Courtney, so since you started dating me, what do you feel about what I am doing and um, the Embridge Oil spell? You're a nurse. I mean, you were right there with the doctor, the VA doctor. Um, I've been a nurse for about a year. I met John, um, and about six weeks ago, he started getting dizzy. Um, at first, I just kind of blew it off because I thought maybe he was just dehydrated, not drinking enough water. Um, he kind of overschedules himself sometimes. He really is passionate about what he does, and um, he spends many, many hours of the week doing this. Um, so then he continued to get dizzy, so finally five weeks later I forced him to go to the, the VA and get checked out. Um, one of the doctors there who incidentally has a master's degree in environmental health, and so we said the two chemical, two main chemicals in, in the oil is benzene and toluene, and which John was probably breathing in when he was cleaning up the spill, and when he was getting in it he was probably mixing up some of the chemicals and still breathing it in. And so we're worried that this is finally starting to affect him. And um, he's had a, a CT scan. He's had um, an ultrasound on his kidneys. He's had um, several urine tests, which they found blood in his urine. He's also had an ultrasound on his carotid arteries. And we're about to go do an MRI um, of his brain. I'm worried that he might have a, a brain tumor or something like that. From what is HELPA.org? Honor environment. Love people, protect America, and maybe if this gets big enough like Greenpeace or 350.org or Sierra Club, maybe I'll change that to all. Because I want to stop all tar sands and all fracking. Those are two of the most hazardous substances or, or methods of uh, trying to get um, resources that we really don't need. Um, and that's polluting our water. And, and basically, helper.org is fighting for our water. It's investigating the truth. It's exposing the truth with video proof. And we're finding tumors in the fish now in the Kalamazoo River three years after the spill, and fish are full of oil. That's what I'm fighting for, because they're being told they can eat those fish. And, and obviously, if they do, they're gonna get cancer 10 years down the road, and they're gonna die. And um, I don't care about the death threats. I don't care about me getting sick down the road. I already know I'm going to lose 15, 20 years of my life if I'm not assassinated before then because of the chemicals I've been in from proving this. But I didn't do this for me. This isn't about me. This isn't about John Bolenbaugh. This is about you and you and you, all of you that are here today. This is about all of you. And that's what I'm fighting for. That's why I'm risking my life for this.